Okay, I mean that's that's a really hard question, right? Like especially if you pose it very broadly for you know on autonomous systems in general, not just autonomous cars. And and the reason is, you know, I a lot of the behavioral uh, biases that we have are in fact you know are clearly uh, violations of rational uh, decision making. Um, if you know what this, what the environment is, and you, you, you know, you know a priori what the rational thing to do is, and you observe that people are deviating from that, then you can correct them, right? And you can say you can call them biases. But in in many situations where you don't know what the environment is, you don't know what the real decision situation is, and people are exhibiting something that looks like a bias in an artificial version of the world, you know, so it's like in a lab experiment where um, you know you create an artificial version of a stock market or something like that right now and 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 you measure people's behavior and you characterize it as a bias now it could be that in you know this is essentially basically a heuristic that people are following and it could be that in the real world given the real distribution of decisions that people are faced with in that world this heuristic may actually be optimal and this is kind of the idea that you know is uh, been popularized by um, uh, people like Ralph Hertwig and Kurt Gigeranza of the uh, this adaptive toolbox that you've got um, that a lot of things that appear as biases are actually if very effective heuristics in an uncertain world and that it's actually optimal to follow them um, but but to answer that to know that you have to have a theory of the environment right and, and the distribution of the environment so I think so that's, that's kind of one caveat, right? Um, now I think if we come, if we do recognize that there are cases today in the world where people are exhibiting actual biases that are suboptimal for society, right, in, in some way, and, and, and we can rule out uh, the fact that there are other things that we're not measuring that make this, these biases actually optimal, right, uh, then AI gives us this, this opportunity, right, that to eliminate the biases because we can just program the behaviors in the car or in any algorithmic decision-making system um, in a way that we know a priori in a cold, calculated state, you know, and, and kind of uh, rationally, uh, it would be optimal for, for us. But I think at the same time, we still have this, um, we still have a risk, right? There's still a risk of, um, of forgetting some of the things that also matter because the AI is also a model of the world, right? Like AIs um, basically have internal objective functions, you know, like a utility function um, that we program into them and we tell them to optimize it. And we can say objectively that this AI is optimizing this utility function. But if we don't include everything in the utility function that matters, then it's the AI that's biased. Right? then we've actually baked the AI into the hardware or into the software. And we haven't really improved the situation. Right? So one example is, let me give you, um, like in the case of uh, autonomous vehicles, let's suppose that today we have something like 30,000 uh, road fatalities in the US from uh, traffic accidents. Suppose we can, um, we can bring that number down to 20,000. Okay, so that's uh, 10,000 lives saved per year. That's a pretty substantial number, you know, one third in, you know, elimination of, of the uh, fatalities. Now, what if all of these 20,000 people who died are cyclists? Or what if all of them were children? Or what if all of them were people from a specific ethnicity that the cars just couldn't detect or something like that, right? It is very, I mean, objectively, if you told the car makers to optimize for number of, of lives saved, right? They've, that's the optimal, right? They've minimized that number. There's no way, so let's suppose for the sake of the argument, that there's no way to reduce that number. Um, then you've achieved the goal and you have, and because it's algorithmic, right? You have this kind of sense that it must be objective, you know, it's, it's provably optimal and, and we've run all of the studies and all of the statistics, but you miss something very fundamental, which is that you cannot excessively disproportionately harm one group, right? 
and you're violating something you know, that is very hard to quantify. So I think this is where um, you create problems with, with machines. And I think this is also where you potentially dissuade um, uh, potential customers or citizens who would have to give consent for these technologies to be allowed on the road. So I think, um, yeah, so it's kind of in that sense that, I, that I, I, I'm just putting some caveats around uh, that I, I think also speak to uh, the kind of the over exuberance and exci excitement over the technology. I don't think it can solve everything. Um, I still think these um, human value, the definition of the human value, of what human value is, or kind of basically the definition of the objective function is still something that we need to discuss and think about, and it's not objectively given. You know, and people from different religions and different cultural traditions and philosophical traditions disagree on what this utility function should be. The utilitarians have a very clear answer, but others have, have a different answer. And I think, you know, and, and that's what, what uh, society does, you know, it, uh, and the public sphere and politics and, and uh, constitutional rights and so on. They all try to negotiate this utility function of society.